Hey Ableton users, in this video I want to teach you how to use Ableton Live as a vocoder for live performance. All right, so a while ago at Sunday Sounds, we released a tutorial on how to use Main Stage 3 to achieve a live vocoding effect. Now, we weren't really sure if that tutorial was gonna take off, but turns out that a lot of Worship Keys players are really interested in live vocoding, or at least kind of curious about seeing what that could look like. So, in this video, I wanna teach you how to achieve the same outcome, live vocoding, but in Ableton Live. Now, to start off with, I wanna say that we normally do all of our Ableton tutorials in an Ableton intro-friendly way, but sorry, Ableton intro users, you're not gonna be able to follow along in this tutorial. You're gonna need standard or suite because the vocoding plugin isn't included in Ableton intro. So with that being said, go ahead and open your version of Ableton Live 9 or 10, standard or suite. And you can use the starter set if you'd like, or you can build this in your existing Ableton set. You're just gonna need an audio track and a MIDI track. So I've already got those loaded up. And you wanna make sure that you choose the audio from to be your mic input. So connect whatever mic you wanna use into your audio interface and make sure that you designate that as the input for your audio track. And you just wanna make sure that that's armed as well. And then for the MIDI track, you just need some sort of MIDI instrument. So I have this aggressive polysynth open right now. This is one of our free Ableton patches that you can download from our website. So if you wanna grab this one and use this exact patch, uh, I'll include a link in the description to that patch. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more in a minute about how the instrument you use as your MIDI instrument affects the vocoding sound. Um, but to start off with, just grab something that has uh, endless sustain. So it sounds like this. And while you're starting off, you also wanna make sure that the sound you're using as your MIDI instrument isn't too dark, it's not filtered way down, uh, because you'll just lose some clarity in the vocoding effect. So if my filter were closed on this sound, something like this, then I might not get as pronounced of a vocoding effect. We'll talk a little bit more about how the MIDI instrument affects the outcome in just a second, but for now, just load in a nice bright synth pad or a polyphonic synth sound of your choice. Now we're gonna go back over to our audio channel strip, and we wanna make sure that both tracks are armed. So if you don't know how to do that, hold command on your keyboard and click the record button for both tracks. And then just to make sure that you're hearing only the vocoded effect, go ahead and drag down the volume of the MIDI instrument. Now with your audio track selected, you're gonna go to audio effects and click and drag the vocoder into the audio effects area at the bottom of the screen. Next, we need to designate that MIDI instrument as the carrier. So this is what uh, the input source that's gonna be fed through the vocoder processed alongside the audio signal from the microphone and you get the vocoded sound as the output. So first off, I found that you get best results by hitting this enhance button right here and then click the drop down. By default, it will say noise and choose external. Now you can designate an audio input source. So we wanna grab the audio from our MIDI instrument, which is the aggressive polysynth. So now when we play notes on the keyboard, they're gonna function as the carrier, gonna get mixed together with the signal from the microphone, and the output is gonna be vocoded audio. So here's how it sounds right now with the polysynth selected as the carrier and the microphone turned on. Now you're not gonna hear the original synth sound, remember, because we turned the volume of that track all the way down. So this is just the pure vocoded sound. So, so I'm, I'm gonna, gonna play, play chords on the keyboard and just talk into the mic and it takes that input source and outputs the vocoded signal based off of the notes that I play on the keyboard. So the vocoder in Ableton's really cool. It does a great job of giving you a decent amount of clarity as far as what's actually being said and the tracking is pretty darn fast as well. 
Now, one thing that makes a big difference in how this feels, whether it feels uh, responsive or not, is your buffer setting in Ableton Preferences. So we're gonna go up here to Live and choose Preferences. And then in the Audio tab, go with a low buffer size, as low as your computer can handle. Uh, a lower buffer size just means there's gonna be less delay between you doing something and you hearing something. So if you have a higher buffer size set, then you're gonna definitely notice latency or delay between what you're saying and what you hear. So that it can be pretty tough in a musical context where everything being in rhythm locked into the tempo is super important. So make sure that you experiment with your buffer size to see how low you can go before it pushes your computer too hard and then kind of find where that line is so that it's still usable and feels good in a live context. So now that we've got a basic vocoder working, let's dig into some of the features of the plugin. I'm going to explain how you can dial in a more specific vocoding sound that's just how you want it. So we already talked about the carrier at the top left section of the plugin. At the bottom, you have this unvoiced knob. Now there's two ways that your vocal cords can produce audio, by either allowing air to pass through your vocal cords or by restricting the flow of air. And the sound that your voice makes when you restrict the flow of air is unvoiced. And so um, if you don't have these unvoiced signals in the signal, they won't be interpreted by the vocoder. So you can lose a lot of clarity as to what you're actually saying, the words you're saying. You'll, you'll hear the, the volume and sort of the general shape of what you're saying, but you might miss some of that consonant, some of the attack of like sounds like T or P. So to compensate for this within the vocoder, you have this unvoiced knob. And when you bring this up, the vocoder will insert a little bit of noise into the signal anytime it detects an unvoiced uh, sound from the mic input. So you have to play around with this to get it to feel natural because if you don't have any at all, you're gonna lack a lot of vocal clarity. But if you add in too much, then it's gonna sound overly noisy and a little bit jarbled in the opposite direction with all sorts of extra consonants and unvoiced sound. So you've got the ability to adjust the volume of those unvoiced sounds and then also the sensitivity. So you can play around with the percentage and the level of the unvoiced parameter until it feels natural. So I found that for my voice in this setup, keeping the sensitivity about 50% and setting the unvoiced to about negative 15 adds a good bit of vocal clarity without it starting to seem robotic or unnatural. In the middle here, you have the various bands of how your voice is being interpreted by the vocoder. Now, Ableton's own help documentation does a pretty good job of explaining the nuances of how all of these bands process the audio. This tutorial would be super long if I went in depth into the theory of how this works. So I'm gonna point you to Ableton Live's own help documentation to get a little bit better understanding of everything that's going on here in the middle of the plugin. Um, but a basic overview is you can actually see on the frequency spectrum, uh, you've got your lows down at the bottom on the left side and high frequencies over on the right. And you can add or take away bands, which makes a more or less complex vocoding sound. So more bands is gonna be a more natural representation of the original voice. And fewer bands is gonna feel a little bit more constricted. And as you get to really aggressive band cuts, more of a robotic sound. Over on the right side, you have some more macros that are pretty intuitively labeled. You can adjust the depth of the effect. You can adjust the attack, whether the vocoder starts immediately when it's received or if it fades in slowly over time like a synth pad. You can adjust the release, just like you would with a synthesizer, or whether it stops abruptly when you stop playing or if it fades out over time. And then you have the ability to blend in the original audio signal with this dry, wet control. And then I wanna spend a second to talk about this last macro over here, the formant. So this actually shifts the tonal center of your voice, the formant of your voice, up or down in the frequency spectrum. And this is a common effect in a lot of music that uses a vocoding effect. If you shift the formant down, then it's gonna sound deeper, somewhat more masculine or just unnaturally deep. And if you shift the formant up, then it can start to sound uh, more feminine or unnaturally high and shrill as you get to more aggressive settings. So I'll demonstrate with the formant down a little bit. So this is with the formant down a good bit, and it's got a deeper characteristic to it. 
and I'll go for a really aggressive formant shift here with the formant all the way down kind of sounds a little bit like Darth Vader there's not a lot of high frequency content there and then we'll go back to no formant shift for reference so this is with no formant shifting so it's kind of uh, pretty wide open full range vocal coding effect and then we'll shift the formant up this is with the formant up a good amount and if we go really aggressive here then you start to sound like a chipmunk. Now that you've got the basic vocoder effect up and running, you can start to make more stylistic decisions about how you want to blend this sound in with the rest of your key sounds and with your band. So you can shift the formant up or down stylistically and you can add effects like EQ, compression, and reverb. Reverb can be a really great effect for sort of adding a bit of wash and space to the vocoding effect. You can even use it uh, in place of a pad, which is one of my favorite things to do when I'm working with a vocoder. So really quickly here, we're just gonna add the reverb audio effect. We'll just place it after the vocoder. And I'm gonna increase the decay time a good bit and I'll go for mid quality here. So I'll start it with a bypass so you can hear it without the reverb and then I'll toggle it on so you can hear how it just gives everything a bunch of space and extra roominess. So here's the vocoder on its own. Just super dry, pretty direct and in your face. Now here's with the reverb on. Takes on a totally different character. I think for most worship musicians, adding some sort of spatial processing like reverb or delay or shimmer is really going to help it to sit right in the mix. If it's pretty dry, it, it really can be too noticeable and it might get in the way of what you're trying to do. But with some modulation, something washing it out, it can be a lot more subtle and add a really cool ambient effect to your live band. So now I want to explain how the MIDI instrument you use as the carrier can have an effect on the output of the vocoder itself. So again, this is using uh, the aggressive polysynth, which is one of our free Ableton patches of the week. It's a big, bright synth sound with a lot of attack, and it gives you a pretty full range vocoding sound. So now let me demonstrate what happens if we change out the synth instrument that's acting as the carrier. So I'll grab another one of our free patches. We will do this graced good pad sound. So first off, let me show you what that sounds like on its own. Here's the pad. And I am gonna open up the filter cutoff so it's got more brightness that will give us a more clarity from the vocoded sound. Now I'm gonna bring the volume of that sound down and bring up the vocoded effect. So now you'll be able to notice the difference in how the vocoder responds to this synth as the carrier compared to that pretty straightforward, pretty dry poly synth from before. So this is how it sounds now with this pad. It's a lot more heavy in the mid range, maybe a little bit more muddy, and it doesn't have quite as aggressive of an attack because that's present in the original synth as well. Now I'll grab one more sound to demonstrate. This is a lead sound, another one of our free patches. So here's what this lead sound sounds like on its own. And then I'll bring the volume of that down and increase the volume of the vocoder audio track. So now you can hear this little warbly quality from the original carrier signal in the vocoded signal as well, which is a big difference from that original polysynth that was really dry and didn't have any pitch modulation at all. So the point I'm trying to make is that the carrier you choose has a big impact on the output quality of the vocoded signal. So go ahead and experiment. And if you need some different sounds to use, you can grab all of our free Ableton patches and find ones that work for you. 
yourself. Now there's lots more cool stuff you can do with vocoding in Ableton Live, but we wanted to give you a basic overview first so this tutorial wasn't super long. So leave your questions and comments to let us know what you'd like to learn more about or what you still need a little bit more clarity on. In the next video on vocoding in Ableton, I'm gonna teach you how to feed in the input from your live worship leader and automatically vocode or harmonize those notes all using Ableton Live. So to make sure you don't miss the next vocoding tutorial, and if you're using Ableton Live for your key sounds in general, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next video. Thanks for watching.